My name is Monika Frech. My background is originally in social sciences and communication. Um, and that's also what I do at Dark Horse, but also um, in those other 50% of my time. And you will hear more about that later on. Um, my name is Lisa Zurt, and my background is political science and film and theater studies. Um, and I work part-time at Dark Horse, and the other part of my time, of the week, of my year, I spend mostly in like political research um, projects. So um, both of us are not designers, um, but part of what we do is based on design principles. Um, we are two of 30 co-founders of Dark Horse Innovation. Dark Horse Innovation is an agency for innovation development, and we mainly do two things. We do innovation. That means companies or clients approach us with business challenges and we help them to solve those challenges. Uh, we develop products or services for them, um, which they implement later on. Um, we also help them to do that, that, that development in-house. So uh, we go to those companies, um, we consult them how they can change their structures, their processes, and also their minds and their approach so they can be more innovative in the long run. We do workshops. Um, we also do individual workshops and uh, corporate workshops. Um, to show the methods like design thinking or service design. Um, and we developed a set of tools that enables innovative work. Uh, for example, a whiteboard uh, that enables teamwork or software. This is what we do at Dark Horse. The reason why we are here today and, um, is actually that we want to share a special story with you. It's, um, a story that is somehow exemplary for this city here. It's a story um, how two ideologies that former divided this city into two parts. Uh, on the one side, the communism, on the other side, the capitalism, formed somehow a symbiotic relationship in a company. Um, the story of Dark Horse is this symbiotic relationship. We try to connect the best of both, the best of the socialist part and the best of the capitalist part. And uh, we would like to share with you how we do it, why we do it this way, and how this might be a vision of the future of work. <coughs> so um, some years ago, to, towards the end of our decree program, we stepped out into the world, ready, well-educated, full of plans, full of visions, and what we found there was actually a world that, again, was um, divided into two options. First of all, there was the option of either like taking any corporate job, um, yeah, gaining like, or getting um, a decent entry-level salary, um, receiving those pre-printed um, business cards with a social identity you'd henceforth show to everybody. This was on the one side. On the other side, there was the option of going into the freelance business. Totally independent of any hierarchies, totally independent of any arbitrary um, tasks you were set by any boss. Independent as well of stability, independent um, as well on the good side because you then would be like totally autonomous. We were in front of this choice and we, wouldn't, we weren't really sure what to do with it. We just had the feeling that this is not the way, not the one and not this one and not the other one were like the ways we want to go on. So we, we, we thought, well, the world we want to work in does not yet exist. So that's why we created it um, and we named it Dark Horse. So we decided to found a business. That's serious business, of course. So we looked for advice. Uh, we read books, we talked to a lot of people. We actually went to lectures like this one. So take everything that we say with a grain of salt. Here's the three most important pieces of advice that we get. 
Never found a company with more than three people. You need strong personalities to found a company. Two, never found a company with your friends. Never work with your friends, in fact. You will end up hating each other. And three, spend all your time for your startup. Just be there 24-7 and put all your energy in your work and just make it work. We ignored all that advice. You heard before, we are 30 co-founders and we have no hierarchies at all. We only have CEOs because we are obliged by the German law. You cannot fund a business without CEOs. Um, but internally, it doesn't matter for us. Um, nobody, nobody is the boss, we don't have any hierarchies. I cannot say this often enough because people usually don't believe it. it's like, yeah, yeah, but you do have a boss, right? No, we don't. Um, so don't, don't even ask us for that. Okay, so you think 30 people and no boss, how do you even try to make a decision? Well, for projects, we work in small teams and those teams are totally independent. But for strategic decisions, everybody is involved. Everybody is involved in strategic decisions. How does that work? Um, well, we are not a democracy, but we are holacracy. Um, it's a system where everybody can block every decision, but only if they feel that it's against our core business values. So it's sort of like an emergency brake in a train. You don't pull it because it's nice and green outside and you want to take a walk, but because of really serious, urgent reasons. To really make that system work, we have a special, we have developed a system for our meetings to facilitate them. Our meetings are always strongly facilitated um, and everybody gets to be the facilitator we take, we take rounds for that. So everybody is in that role uh, once in a while. So we really know what it takes um, to facilitate a good meeting, which of course makes everybody else empathic and really everybody tries to also co-facilitate. To enable that, uh, we developed a set of gestures for the one part. Um, so if you wanna say something, just normal, you raise your hand like this. If you're the first person who wants to say something, if you're the second person, you raise your hand like this. If you're the third person, you raise your hand like this. So that's a, a, just very easy gestures that really make it more easy to facilitate. Um, also, uh, when we started this, uh, we often had the situation where we would you know, go in rounds and someone would say, yeah, I just wanted to say what she said. And the next person was like, oh, I totally disagree with what she said. Um, so just you know, endless discussions like that. So we now have a gesture for, I agree. So somebody says something. And it totally helps to just quickly get the opinion in the group, or I disagree, which is, of course, a bit more strict. <laughs> um, for every decision that we take, we have three rounds. So in the first round, you're only allowed to ask informational questions. Like, I didn't understand that, or I think we have to get more information on that part. In the second round, everybody should say his or her opinion. Um, so we, we really encourage everybody to really contribute. And only in the third round, we really take the decision. So this helps us to not just take a decision and then later on we realize, oh, if I had known that, I would have made another decision. Or, oh, this opinion is really interesting. It actually changes my opinion. Um, and also, um, like I said before, everybody can block decisions. But if you do that, you have to bring up a new alternative the next time. So if you say, no, 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 I don't think we as a business should do that, you have to sit together with our teammates, just uh, round up some colleagues and think about an alternative and present it the next time. So this system, it sounds a bit complicated, but it has really worked very well for us. Um, it makes us happy on the one hand, because everybody is involved, everybody can contribute, but nobody is overwhelmed by decision. Nobody has to know it all. We, we do it in a group. But it also makes us very efficient. Um, we take good decisions. We are not blocked by hidden agendas. Politics are not involved because it's all on the table. Everybody can block decisions if you want to. Um, so it's actually, it sounds complicated, but it makes us very quick and very efficient. So um, the second thing we were told was never found this company with friends because in the end, you'll all hate each other. You'll end up in these co-founder conflicts every company has and don't go into that. Um, just stay friends and do your business, business with other people. So, well, somehow, I mean, we've all been friends before we started Dark Horse and uh, the amazing thing is that we are still friends. Um, 
the question of, is actually how can you keep friendship while keeping as well a business running? Um, I think that the, the, the main question behind friendship is the question of trust. Um, friendship is built on that and trust is also the thing you need if you want to start something new. So um, we ask ourselves how can we maintain this trust throughout all these years of our business um, and we hope that there are many years to come. Um, <laughs> so we, we thought about like certain instruments, certain tools and certain formats who can enable us to actually keep the trust and the harmonies among each other. So first of all, there is, like Jürgen already mentioned, there is the failure award. Um, it's, it's an award for the best failures we were ever made in our uh, business history. There's, for example, one, um, I think the last failure award, actually, I think it was Lisa, um, well, that's her. <laughs> and she sent out a business proposal to a client and uh, she somehow misspelled the client's name. So the and proposal the went <laughs> to the client and with the wrong name on it. And okay, in the end we did not get the job, but Lisa as well, she didn't get, she didn't get claimed on it. Um, it's because she, instead of that, got the, 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 the failure award. So we think to reward mistakes is a, it's a, it's a very good thing because um, you need somehow a failure-friendly attitude to actually be open, be open-minded to, to actually dare things and it's a key to be innovative. So that's first. Then secondly, we have something that's called um, the Unicorn Games. So today's Friday, but our Thursdays usually don't start with creative mornings, but they start with the Unicorn Games in our dark, ho uh, dark Horse office. And the Unicorn Games is actually, it's something like an internal games league um, where we try to focus on the team and not on the topics. Um, it's like we have, we have done all kinds of stuff. Like we have, we had done like little pff, Olympic games two weeks ago, I think. So stuff like that. It just helps to create like a very playful atmosphere and um, yeah, to, to keep the team spirit alive. So that second. And um, the third thing we have is the role of a feel-good manager. Because of course, no matter what instruments and tools we use, of course we do have conflicts, that's for sure. And if there's a conflict, um, there's, there are different ways how to solve it. And one possibility in our office is that you go to the feel-good manager and ask him to mediate between you and the other conflicting party. So that's, that's about the three tools, how to maintain friendship alive and uh, yeah, to actually keep the business running. It's, we can click one more, yeah. <laughs> This actually makes us happy and we asked uh, friends and uh, actually those friendships have got even more intense over the last four years. And it also is in our perspective the only way to be innovative. Um, you need this playful, failure-friendly atmosphere to create something new, to actually to, to take this risk um, of start something new. So we think this is a very important and essential part of an innovative innovation culture. So the third advice, spend all your time in your company. Uh, we also ignored that. Um, as you heard before, we are 30 co-founders from 25 disciplines. Um, we have business people, we have engineers, we have artists, uh, we have IT guys, uh, designers, communication specialists, so really interdisciplinary. Um, <clears throat> and we all spend about 50% of our time at Dark Horse and 50% of our time outside of Dark Horse. In those other 50%, we pursue our own projects. Um, so for example, some of us freelance as designers or as copywriters. Um, some of us also choose to parent, for example. Some of us choose to simply follow their passions. So one of our colleagues just bought a huge farm in Brandenburg that he now rebuilds. Um, there are different models for it. Um, you can divide your week. You can also divide your year. So uh, myself, for example, last year I was um, in the Indian Himalayas for half a year to innovate a, a school network there and spent the, the rest, of, rest of the year um, pretty much at Dark Horse. So I divided up my year. Um, 
and this really also helps us to be happy at work um, because we go to work every day or most of us every other day. Um, we always meet the same trusted people like we heard before, but those people always change. They always bring something new to the table. It's, it's very interesting to come to work and work with somebody who just worked on an engineering job or just programmed a website yesterday or just does stuff I don't have a clue of. And it's just very inspiring and we, we keep learning from each other and also with each other. Um, and at the same time, it also helps us for our business. It also helps us to stay innovative. So what we do in our respective fields really is the basis um, that we then bring together at Dark Horse, which enables us to have uh, creative ideas and to really um, get that circle running, really get creative, inspiring ideas. So um, what we found out is that we value certain things. We value um, at Dark Horse collaborative decision making. We value a, a kind of experimental attitude and atmosphere. And we value real diversity. And what we did is we created actually the perfect job for us. We created this Dark Horse that is offering all of that to us. The interesting thing about this is that we now somehow have the feeling that we hit the nail on the head. Because lately, more and more applications are coming in, and people keep asking us whether it's possible to, to work with us. So people of our own generation come to us and ask, well, OK, do you have any vacancies? How is it? Um, do, you have, do you have a place for me at Dark Horse? Um, <clears throat> so we think that the wishes and the needs we had some years ago and still have are not just our needs, but are actually the needs of a whole generation. Um, you can call it like the Generation Y. The generation that is like very well educated, that has traveled a lot, that has, has gained lots of working experience, that's really passionate about their jobs and their, um, and their respective disciplines. Um, and we think that this is like, it, it's, it's not a huge threat. It's a really, really big chance. Um, regarding this Generation Y, towards or like, um, yeah, in contrary or like facing more and more aging society, the potential and the power of Generation Y is increasingly, it, it's getting increasingly more powerful. So we think there's like a huge chance actually for all of us, for all of you to change the, to, to change the world of work in your ways and regarding to your needs and wishes. All right, so good for you. You created work that you like. Well, why should you care? Why is that interesting for you? Well, because we think um, our work actually works, not only for us, um, but also in the outside world. Um, we actually not only have the proof of concept, we still exist. We are still friends. We, are, we still work at Dark Horse. Our concept works for us, but we also have the proof of market. Um, in the last four years, we founded our company in 2009. Uh, we work for clients like DHL. We help them to uh, develop a peer-to-peer -peer logistics service, which is currently piloted in Scandinavia, something that they would not have thought about. Uh, we also recently helped Deutsche Bahn to implement an innovation program um, and set up an innovation platform, which enables them to collaborate with their different stakeholders. Um, we have helped SAP to roll out a global uh, innovation program. So, Clients approach us, it works, um, it's our job now. Um, so that, that should prove that a different way of working actually has some value. And we think um, <clears throat> the world has changed and it, all, it, it keeps changing. The digital revolution, we all carry around our world in our pockets now. Uh, it's a technical revolution on the surface, but it also entails a much deeper cultural and social revolution. It changes the way that we work, that we live, that we interact with, with each other. It even changes the way that we feel, that we love, and that we think. It also changes the business world, of course. Um, <clears throat> products and services are now more intertwined. <clears throat> Companies can no longer just roll out more or cheaper products and just advertise them to the masses, but brands are forced, in a way, uh, to enter conversations, um, to talk with their their consumers, or even the other way around. Consumers now define 
and demand value of brands. <clears throat> and many companies view this as a threat, like Lisa said before, but we think it's actually a huge chance. Um, if we change the way that work works, all of us together, um, brands can hugely benefit from it. They can stay innovative and relevant, and also the people who work there can stay happy. So those huge corporations, at the moment, they have a lot of problems to attract young talent. But we think it's not impossible. We think the change is possible, if they try, if they want it. So Dark Horse, the name of our company, it's derived from British horse racing. A dark horse is a, is a, a racehorse um, that's unknown, but that later on wins the race. So if you were bold enough to bet on that horse, you can be the big winner. And that's actually what, what we hope for. So let's all bet on the dark horses a little bit more often. Thank you very much.